So welcome everybody to another week uh, in this bite size talk, talk series. Uh, today we have Alex Pelza from the NF Core Core team and also a clinical bioinformatics lead at Wöringer Ingelheim. And he will talk to us about software packaging for NF Core, uh, a matter that we've been all like concerned with when writing NF Core pipelines. So thanks a lot, Alex, for joining us today and we look forward to your talk. Thank you, Gisela, for the introduction. And uh, as Gisela already mentioned, we're talking a bit about uh, software packaging today for NF Core. It's not strictly speaking NF Core way in this case, but uh, more or less also involving Conda, writing Conda recipes, uh, BioConda recipes uh, for packaging any bioinformatics tools or general purpose tools uh, to be used in NF Core pipelines, for example, and NF Core modules, of course. So just to give you a brief overview, are we going to talk a bit about best practices and software packaging, what we've been trying in the past, what we've been using in the past, but more or less focused on, on what we try to do nowadays. Because this is a limited bite-sized talk, it's not very long. I have to focus on the most important bits and cannot go into all the details, especially now also when we come to the next point, Bioconda and Conda Forge, what's actually the difference between the, both of them. Then also the how to package a tool in Bioconda and Conda Forge. This is also just a brief overview about what you have to do, what you have to follow, what kind of are the caveats that you have to circumvent if possible. And uh, we cannot go into full detail there, of course, because there are some peculiarities. And, and as you all know, uh, things can go wrong very quickly if you if you do things improperly. And then I'll also talk a bit about biocontainers and document singularity at a glance there and summarize and wrap that up all up. So the best practices, and I'm only focusing on the do's here to limit us a bit in, in, in time consume, consumption, is that we usually try to work with other communities here in, in NF Core. So we are heavily relying on upstream projects to package our software, our tools for pipelines. That is true for both bioinformatics and general purpose tools. So for example, bioinformatics tool of choice would be GATK or SAM tools, which are already packaged in Bioconda. But there are of course also, also other tools that are not strictly bioinformatics related, which are usually going, let's say just a, a Python library to, to color some output or something like that could go to Conda Forge. And biocontainers is the preferred way in, bio, in, in NF Core nowadays, how we use uh, containers, both Docker and Singularity, to actually use them in pipelines. And what we actively try to do, and whenever you ask something around uh, containerization, around packaging things in NF Core, you will always get pointed towards these projects, these upstream projects. We really encourage people to contribute to these because this is not just for you a good idea to do that, but because you also be, will receive uh, frequent updates, for example, of the packages that you pull there, uh, push there. Well, Biocon and Conda Forge is always, if people start new with, with these, um, people are usually really a bit confused. What's actually the difference? Do I have to push my packages to Bioconda? Do I have to get my packages and uh, to Conda Forge? Actually, they're very similar, but not strictly speaking, the exact same thing. I already briefly mentioned it a bit. Bioconda, as the name suggests already, is really strictly focusing on bioinformatics tools. So it could also chemistry, computational chemistry tools, of course, but it's more bio, bio related. Conda Forge is more for general purpose tools. So if you have some fancy Python, some fancy R-based package that you would like to get there, you can actually push that to Conda Forge. So there's this easy decision tree, basically, Bioconda, life science related, Conda Forge, general purpose stuff. So that's where you have to get your packages there. And as we are all working towards making these uh, tool, making any tool, Bioconda and Conda and or Conda Forge um, tool package, uh, we always try to either make the decision whether it's a bioinformatics tool or a Conda Forge tool that we have to push it there. The packaging really relies on similar infrastructure. The setup is a bit different, but the overall things are very, very similar. It's not strictly more complicated if you want to get something to Conda Forge. They just have a tiny bit different setup if you if you produce a recipe for Conda Forge, whereas you have to produce a very different one for Bioconda. But if you know how to do a Bioconda recipe, you usually can learn how to do a Conda Forge recipe very quickly as well. It's not too complicated. 
So to guide you a bit through how that could look like, um, these are a couple of steps that you have to usually follow. So the first step would always be to check if your tool is already available on Biocom and ContaForge. So the slides will be online after this talk as well. So you, these links will be clickable. So there's a link for Biocom and ContaForge, which uh, are basically direct links to the package index of, of both um, um, repositories and you can simply search for your tools. So for example, if you would like to see whether there's a, a tool, a recipe for SAM tools already available that packages SAM tools, then you can just click on Bioconda because there's a bioinformatics tool, obviously, and then search for SAM tools and you will be seeing this page basically so that you have multiple versions of the tool, you have dependencies of that uh, packages. So for example, it depends on HDS lib, but also some lib GCC, lib sap lib and, and some other uh, dependencies. And it also lists multiple tools that are relying on this recipe. Well, obviously, if you add a new one, there won't be anybody relying on your recipe as of now, but in the future, that might actually change. So this is quite a uh, um, yeah, nice way to actually see whether there is something available already for your um, tool that you want to package. So the second point uh, that you would like to, uh, that you should usually follow here if you want to package something for Bioconda and ContaForge is to check the contributor documentation for adding to Bioconda and ContaForge. So you both have very, very detailed uh, documentation available how to do that in the respective case. So Bioconda has a listing of, of basically a checklist that you can tick off, also giving you some hints on how to do that most efficiently, same for ContaForge. So ContaForge has, a, as I said in the beginning, a quite bit of a different approach how to, how to do this, but nevertheless, they also have a step-by-step -step guide available on the, on the page. And again, this is linked here with in, individual links to the respective pages. So you don't have to search for that. You can simply click there and then just go there and, and it will explain how to do this efficiently. There's also a bonus hint, since most of the tools that we need to package for NFCore are Bioconda tools. It's, it's not as common to do ConderForge packages, but the ma majority of tool that, tools that we use in NFCore as we are kind of a bioinformatics pipeline community is that we package things for Bioconda. And there I have to say there is this bonus hint for Bioconda. Please just think about joining the Gitter channel and asking their detailed questions. So if you have experience, if you experience issues with packaging things for Bioconda, there's usually a really large crowd around, similar to what is around in NFCore, that can help you with uh, your packaging needs for Bioconda recipes. Also, it, it's quite advisable to join the GitHub organization of Bioconda because that makes your life also easier. It gives you the permissions to review other recipes and learn, for example, by looking at other recipes more efficiently. Although it's all open source, it also means um, it's a bit easier because it can also trigger the bots and also notify people from the core team to have a look at the recipe if you're a member of the Bioconda organization, which is similar to NFCore. It's free. You can just join. Uh, it might take a couple of days, however, but nevertheless, you can do that. The third step, of course, would be then writing your recipe. Usually what I do there is I either rely on the templates, and again, there's a link here um, for some exemplar, exemplary templates, um, or I just recycle a similar package recipe. So for example, if I package a Python recipe, uh, which is um, already on Biocon, which I want to actually get to Bioconda, uh, I actually typically try to look for another Python uh, package that is already on Bioconda and then just try to figure out what I need to change to make my recipe work. However, I have to say your mileage may vary here because sometimes these uh, are really different in dependencies. And also if you just are a lucky person and somebody already made a PyPy package, for example, you could also use the skeleton templates where, where this is possible. That does not always work, but in some cases, if your package is already luckily on PyPy available, you can just go call the skeleton PyPy and the package name that will automatically create a template already for you that should also pull in and fill out the, the dependencies of your package, for example, so you don't have to figure that out on your own. Similar things exist for R and some others as well. So if you click on the link above here, you will find some more information on how to do that and how, how this is, for example, done for Perl script, uh, for Perl tools and, and other um, tools out there. A cool thing also that James mentioned before I started giving the talk here is also that you can test your recipe locally. So there's um, conda build 
thing that you have to install manually. So if you install Conda, it's not always there, but you can use Conda to install a Conda build that will set up an environment where you could also locally test building a recipe, which will give you a bit of an error handling opportunity before actually pushing this to Bioconda. So if you follow these steps, usually you should at least get somewhat a half functional recipe out. I would say in some cases, if you're lucky, and especially that at least for me held true in the most cases when you had a PyPy package this already built quite, pretty much well. So um, such an example recipe could look like this. Usually this is just a build as H script, which is um, just used in the build step of the recipe. And then you have this meta YAML file, which uh, describes some of the content of the, of the recipe. So usually people set the version of the tool package up here and then just refer to this in the version string here. Then um, build numbers need, need to be changed at some point. If you, for example, bump a new version of a, of a recipe, then you have to increase this. You have to list the source URL. This has to be a fixed URL, so it cannot be a, a URL that has, that is overwritten all the time. Handled with at all, and then the requirements to build, to, um, and to run, and also to host uh, the host requirements are actually listed here in the recipe. So this is just an example. There are much co more complicated ones out there, but there are also much more easier ones out there. So this is a C, C++ tool, which means some of the make compilers and the C compilers have to be present here, for example. So if you're done with writing that recipe up, um, then what you could do is submitting a pull request to Bioconda and then waiting for the automated build checks and linting checks um, to hopefully tell you that your recipe is in order and everything that needs to be done is, is done properly. However, I have to mention here again, Bioconda and Conda Forge are slightly different here. So they have a bit of a different setup there. In Bioconda, you have everything in one big master repository. In Conda Forge, it starts a bit differently. And how that difference plays out in the end is actually listed in the documentation that I linked in one of the first slides. So we cannot really cover that full here. If you're lucky and everything builds fine, then uh, once somebody from the communities uh, approves or reviews, reviews and then approves your recipe, then this will be merged and your recipe will then be automatically available in the Conda, Bioconda and Conda Forge package indices in a couple of minutes. Sometimes it takes a couple of hours, however. That depends on how fast the synchronization works. So now we've been talking about Conda recipes and Bioconda recipes, but what about Docker and Singularity containers actually? So because as you know, most of the NF core pipelines really strictly use Docker and Singularity containers all the time and not, not necessarily even have support for Conda recipes. So what about that? Well, as it turns out, um, the Bioconda and the Conda Forge communities really uh, went into a quite good um, agreement with, with the Biocontainers community. So all the Conda and Bioconda recipes are automatically built as Docker containers and also as Singularity containers. And if you click on the Bioconda package index, for example, the Samtools one that I just showed in one of the previous slides, you can just click here on the container button, although it says none, it's actually not none, it's actually there. And you will be seeing a list on, on KIO, uh, where the Samtools Docker images have been uploaded automatically by the uh, Conda continuous integration service. So these are automatically available, which means also if you create a new recipe, then automatically a Docker container for your recipe will be available in a, in a couple of hours. Same applies to the Singularity containers. These are built by the Galaxy team and shared via a Galaxy Depot um, server, which is also linked here. So you simply can directly download that from there and then have your, your package of choice available as a singularity container. You don't have to even write your own Docker image, Docker file or a singularity file. So it looks like this. So the only thing you have to basically do then you can run directly from KIO by your containers and then you have the SAM tools, um, uh, SAM tools version here and you can do the same with singularity and there you have your singularity URL with the samples contain although these are different versions here at the moment but nevertheless I think the point is clear. 
However, that is uh, always a relationship with one tool per container. So if, have, if you download the Samtus container from bio, uh, bio containers, you always have just Samtus in there. It's nothing else. If you want to combine, for example, BWA and pipe the output from BWA to Samtus directly, you have to create a so-called MALT container, which is a multi-tool container, which is also a nice way uh, of combining multiple tools together. If you, for example, in a pipeline, want to pipe outputs from one tool to another in a single process step, which in some cases definitely makes sense. For example, con con automatically converting SAM output directly to BAM or CRAM output to make the compression play in hand. Um, that usually makes sense to combine, for example, BWA and Samtus into one container. This can be done using the multi-tool container uh, service also by the bio container community. There you only have add a set of tools to a so-called hash file, which is basically just a text file you add that, which versions you would like to combine, open a pull request with that, and then wait for this to be merged. And then after a couple of hours, you will have a combination of both as a as, an, as a separate container, which you can then use for your purposes. Well, after all these containers and combat packages, uh, we were, you probably are wondering a bit how to use these containers now efficiently in NF core pipelines. Well, a lot of people really made a lot of effort to make that much easier, especially with the DSL version two pipelines where you actually have modules available. So in this case, uh, as has been briefly outlined already in the past, especially on the Slack channels around that and around building modules. Um, we really rely on bio containers and the NF core tools uh, methods around there to actually make that as easy as possible for you. So if you, for example, install multiple tools like FastQC, Samtus, and MultiQC in your pipeline using NF core modules installed, these will automatically have pre-configured URLs with the latest versions of these respective tools in the modules description. So you don't have to worry about actually uh, looking up these um, Docker and Singularity containers in such a case. If you, for example, write a new module, you can simply do that with NF call modules create, and then this would automatically ask you whether in an interactive um, way to um, tell your name, which tool you would like to have, write a module for, and then it will automatically look up in the API of, of bio containers whether there is already in the container available and we'll try to actually get that um, in your module already. Yeah, updates work very similar. So if you want to know how to update such a pack, uh, how, how to update such a module, then um, there's also an update um, function there that will automatically also update the container URLs if, if the module code has been updated. And if you build a new module, tools will always search by containers via an API to query these URLs for you. So to summarize a bit uh, what we've learned a bit about today, although not in very detail because time is a bit limited here, uh, what we usually do, and that's kind of the standard approach to packaging software and tools for NF core pipelines is that we check Biocon and Conda Forge, whether there is already an existing recipe of the tool. If this is not existing, we try, typically try to add it to either Biocon or Conda Forge to make sure that it's available to the broader community. And rely then on bio containers and Galaxy to build a Docker container and keep the singularity containers for us to be used. What's also a good idea is if you don't, if you don't want to maintain the recipe on your own, you can also rely heavily on NF core modules, which have pre-configured uh, URLs already. And what you always should do as well, if you work with modules, use NF core tools because they automatically fetch and update the URLs in, in the modules for you if you need that. A good, um, and that was also briefly, briefly mentioned by someone in the Slack channel today uh, to me is a good thing is also if you have any issues with Conda packages, then please try to use Mamba as a drop in replacement. The commands are not really different. The only thing is that you get much better error outputs. You will know much better what went wrong and you will also get much faster dependency resolving, which will tell you much faster, okay, where your issues are. For example, if you import a, a Python package that is incompatible with another Python package in your Conda environment, you will see that much quicker with Mamba than with the regular Conda. So some last words maybe, software packaging can really get complicated sometimes. So to be very honest, I spent more, more hours than I would like to uh, making BioConda and Conda Forge packages but nevertheless, this always plays out in the end. 
because once you're there, once you did it once, it usually is really easy to update these Bioconda packages. And it's also nicer because there are many other people out there, especially from the other communities like Bioconda and Conda Forge, who will automatically pick up packages and update them for you. They even have automated uh, update bots that will from time to time check GitHub repository URLs and just send an update for your recipe from time to time, which in some cases you can just review and then just accept and then you will have a new version of your tool available. If you do that manually, if you build your own Docker files, for example, all the time, you have to do all of the heavy lifting on your own, which is cumbersome and takes a lot of time. So maybe it's a good idea to invest the time to bring everything to Bicon and Conda Forge and then just rely on that. And in case of doubt, always ask. There is, as I said, multiple communities around uh, who are really happy to help. And then also we have the NF Core community Slack. So in the help channel, for example, you can also ask for guidance and input on your recipes. Uh, it's not really a problem. We have a lot of people who have experience with this. So if you're a beginner and want to get somebody looking over it before you actually go to the, let's say, hardcore Bioconda and Conda Forge communities who are more the experienced users, um, then you can also ask there if you want to. And always remember collaboration is a key, key factor there. So if you do everything on Biocon and Conda Forge, it's also good because everybody benefits, not just NF Core users who are using your packages maybe with a pipeline. But if somebody, for example, wants to use your tool with for some custom analyses, they also will find this on Biocon and Conda Forge and will use it, which means that you also get contributors and users for, for your own tools, for example which is always great because you also get feedback, you also get improvements, sometimes feature requests, sometimes even PRs that help fixing things. So I, it always played out nicely for me at least. So yeah, so, and that's just this basically all the help pages that we have. And if you have some questions, you can also just ask them now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex, for this uh, insightful talk. Um, there is a comment in the chat already um, pointing out maybe one further difference um, between Biaconda and Conda Forge. Um, they mentioned that Conda Forge also targets Windows, uh, yes. Linux, and Mac, whereas Biaconda only targets Linux and Mac. So that could be an additional difference. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Um, also, have if a have question, actually. Um... My my problem with the multi containers or the multi tool, um, the the hash table is very nice to find something. Uh, what combinations already exist, or to add a new one. But I always struggle to then find that long multi container hash that actually already provides this tool. Is there an easy way to find this? Well. There's two ways to do it. The first one would be if you open your pull request against this multi-tool containers, uh, then uh, as someone approves your, your PR and merges it, then an automated continuous integration service will pick this up and build it for you. So you can go into the logs of that CI and find the URL because at some point that CI also pushes that image to bio containers. That's how I do it usually because that is kind of, for me, it always felt like the most convenient way to do that. However, if I'm not completely wrong here, because I never used that before, there is also a, a service URL which can look for combinations of um, packages, which can use like a search engine basically, and then just look for the combination that you want to have. And if you're lucky, for example, there might also already be such a container. So for example, BWA and SAM tools, I, I, I would envision this is a standard thing that a lot of people will have uh, already and would like to have. So there should be multiple versions with multiple combinations of the two tools uh, existing. So you don't necessarily have to build your own thing. But, um, I to look that up. So that's just the two ways I know, but yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. I think I also just know those two ways. <laughs> so um, we would be interested to know more if there's more. Um, there's another question by Phil. Uh, he asked, could you reiterate when you would change the build number? Yes, so maybe I go back to the recipe that you know about what we're talking about here. 
So for example, um, in some cases, for example, a recipe is broken. So uh, for example, if some of the dependencies of that recipes were broken, was recipe was broken because one of the libraries that Bochai used was broken on Bioconda. So um, unfortunately, uh, Bochai didn't release a new version in the, in the meantime because Bowtie itself was not broken, but the dependency was broken. And in such a case, it would make sense to not change anything here, but just increase the build number to two here, because that would then tell the CI, uh, the continuous integration service to rebuild this entire, uh, the entire recipe, automatically pulling in the latest dependency, which is hopefully fixed by then, and then rebuild the entire thing in a way that it's not broken without actually changing the version of the of the actual recipe because that was not changed obviously. So you get like a, a SAM tools 1.15 dash two then available as a condo recipe and also the containers would have that dash two in the build number, which will hopefully be a fix. So usually that is just used for like a patch of dependencies or thing, similar things. Yeah, thanks a lot. I actually also have a question now that we, we are here. Um, I, I think when there is a new uh, version of that package, then there are even automated PRs that will update the recipe for the new version, right? C can you tell yes. us a bit more about this? So the Bioconda uh, community has an automated bot that queries all the URLs that are mentioned here in the source YAML files and automatically tries to update them by taking the existing recipe, just adjusting the app as a change and also decreasing the build number to one again. So I think it just does these three things and that runs, I think all day or overnight or something like that. And then automatically opens full requests against the Bioconda repository. And then people can just go there. Um, usually maintainers who already made that recipe available in the first place are really uh, are tagged on, the, on this PR. And then people can just review, okay, this looks good. CI also runs through in most cases because the dependencies are not usually changing that often. And then basically the update will go through quite quickly so that people don't have to do that manually on, on their own. So if Phil, for example, updates multi-QC, usually the system picks that up within a couple of hours, and then you get a PR if Phil was not faster than the system uh, to open that on him on himself, yeah. Great, that, that really facilitates work then with Bioconda yeah. and so. And um, we yes. have one final question I would say for today um, regarding the PyTest runner. How do we know which version of the PyTest runner is required if you know about it? Or is it, it seems like a very specific question though. That's a good question, which I cannot answer at the moment, to be very honest, because I'm not experienced too much in the details of the Bioconda and ConvaForge uh, continuous integration services. They have their own kind of um, customization in place there. So I'm not really familiar how, how they task Python packages insert inside of the container, and uh, uh, the package building process. I'd have to look that up actually, if, if that is something of concern. Yeah. That'd be probably something to ask on the Bioconda Slack then. Yes, that yeah. could be something you could ask there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. thank you very much everyone. And thank you, especially you, Alex, uh, for this interesting You're talk. And, Hope it helped. Uh, definitely, <laughs> I'm sure it will have lots of views. <laughs>